Now we're going to look at the papers, and they're uh, full of this guy today, uh, Jean-Paul Belmondo. Uh, Alison has been looking through them. Major story dominating the papers, Alison. Major story, Stuart. Uh, he was so iconic and so beloved here in France. You can see uh, every single newspaper is devoted to him this Tuesday. Uh, many people here in, uh, in France called him simply Bebel, or as Le Parisien is calling him today, uh, Bebel Le Magnifique, citing the title of one of his movies, Le Magnifique, uh, The Magnificent. Le Figaro, meanwhile, cites another film calling him the ace of aces. The paper describes him as the most fanciful, most endearing, and most widely loved actor of French cinema. Rarely, they say, did an actor play comedy with so much sincerity. Liberation's headline is a play on the phrase, life is beautiful, la vie est belle, uh, here it's la vie est belle. The paper says that what connected his double career as both intellectual art house actor and then blockbuster star was his eternally carefree spirit. Uh, Liberation is also citing a line from one of Belmondo's films that functions as the perfect epitaph. Uh, he said, I am dead and you miss me because it was fun. <laughs> An actor of so many different sides. Also uh, a strong athlete, wasn't he? I mean, he loved sport, didn't he? He did, and a fun fact that uh, Belmondo fans might not know uh, is that he actually served once as the vice president of PSG, Paris's football team. Uh, France's uh, sports paper L'Equipe today uh, references one of his films in their main headline. Uh, they also have this eight-page special uh, on the actor. A British paper The Guardian, meanwhile, credits Belmondo's amateur boxing career with his iconic flattened nose. And the paper tells some really good anecdotes about him being criticized for his bad looks early on. Uh, one acting teacher said people would burst into laughter if they saw an actress in his arms. Uh, and uh, an early critic said he would never joy su enjoy success with his ruffian's mug. Uh, clearly, the joke is on them. I, for one, find him very attractive. Uh, Belmondo was also very well known for doing his own stunts. And in this cartoon from Ranson in Le Parisien, uh, we see him suspended from a helicopter in a pair of polka dot boxers, which is actually a scene from his film Le Guignolo. Uh, and that angel is saying, do you see who's coming? You learn such a lot from Alison's paper reviews, even her type of man. <laughs> uh, in addition to Belmondo, the papers in the US are uh, also mourning the early loss of the American actor, Michael K. Williams, found dead uh, in his home at just 54. Yeah, police in New York are investigating this as a potential drug overdose. Meanwhile, tributes for the actor are pouring in. Uh, as we read in the New York Times, he was best known for his role as Omar on HBO's The Wire. The show examined the gritty underworld of drugs and police in Baltimore, and Williams' character was openly gay. Uh, the New York Times calls Omar a groundbreaking portrayal of black masculinity on television. Uh, the New York Times also explains that his signature facial scar helped define him as an actor. Uh, he got it during a bar fight. And from that moment on, he said people wanted to cast him in what he described as thug roles. Uh, Williams once said that he felt very different from the character Omar. He said he was a very frightened kid. He had low self-esteem. Uh, one thing, though, that he said he shared uh, with his character was his sensitivity and his ability to love deeply. Nicely summed up. Let's move to the Middle East uh, for this next story. Papers there are focusing on a story that feels like it came out of a movie. Six Palestinians they actually tunneled their way out of an Israeli prison. Yeah, it's an incredible story. A Saudi paper, Arab News, is calling it the Great Palestinian Escape. The paper writes that its audacity drew immediate comparisons to the 1994 film The Shawshank Redemption, uh, which also features an iconic tunnel prison escape. Uh, they also report that there were celebrations in Gaza and the West Bank after news of this jailbreak got out. A pan-Arab paper, Al Arabi Al Jadid, does seem pretty pleased or impressed, at least uh, on their front page. You can actually see the hole that the men and crawled out of on the other side. Uh, the paper is calling it the evasion that humiliated the occupier. A very different story, obviously, in Israel, where a manhunt has been launched to find these escapees. Uh, but Al Arabi Al Jadid uh, is correct in saying that there is shock in Israel uh, over how this unusual escape was able to happen. And finally, Alison's got a statue story for us. Statue stories, of course, uh, means, well, what on earth they look like. This is in Scotland, facing ridicule online. 
That's right. Uh, this statue was unveiled outside of a football stadium in Scotland. Uh, we love a statue story. The Independent writes that it's being called the worst statue since that famous Ronaldo bust at the Madeira airport. If you need a reminder, obviously, uh, you see it there on the right. Uh, this other statue depicts the Scottish hero William Wallace, but it's based actually on Mel Gibson's portrayal of the warrior from Braveheart. I guess hence the open, open shouting mouth. Yes. Uh, apparently, the statue was actually made over a decade ago, but it Oh. Uh, went into storage after it was vandalized. Uh, now that it is returned out of storage, hopefully it's not going to meet the same fate. Uh, I, for one, think it's kind of great. Do you? I like it, yeah. It's strange. I mean, better it, than Ronaldo. It, it looks like Matt, uh, Mel Gibson. That's <laughs> sort of true, I suppose. Yeah, certainly better than Ronaldo. Anyway, latest statue um, causing a little bit of hilarity there in Scotland. <laughs> Alison with the papers. Next half hour of the programme.